This is Mark Boyer, and this is a short video to introduce uh, my Ticket to Paradise, and uh, which I've been handing out to public officials and random people I meet on the street in here in Vancouver in the last few days. Uh, basically, it's uh, uh, one ticket to paradise, free admission, okay? And then it quotes Romans 8. Redeemable by sharing in the burden, therefore sharing in the glory of upholding God's creation. And in this way, we inherit the earth. Now, that's the answer to a quiz, uh, actually a mystery line in the Bible that says that, uh, you know, when we were children, uh, God really did take care of his creation. And when we become sons, that means we inherit the earth. That means we share in the burden in order to share in the glory. And the answer to that riddle has never been understood. It's never been written. Okay. And I'm saying we share in the burden by upholding God's creation. And it's obvious. Okay. Now, but then it's obvious to me. <laughs> okay. Now let's go back, okay? Now, the fact is that the next line says it, it, it signals the fact that we'll return to the mindset of the ancients. Now the mindset of the ancients is a concept of how people thought when they were in the Garden of Eden, okay? In the Garden of Eden, it says there that we were the caretakers of the garden and we knew no evil. Okay? Now, that concept is well understood in the uh, notion of upholding God's creation. If we upheld God's creation in our heart, uh, we would return to the mindset of the ancients. And basically, that's the grand awakening, uh, to put it in secular terms. And it's the awakening to the collective conscience, or what in mythology was called the lost chord, which is actually a note. Okay, And the reality is all the great scriptures of ancient were done and, to, and were done to be sung in rituals, okay, and this is something that's been lost. Uh, we have lost our connection to the lost court. Now the reality is we create the very reason why we are here. We create an entire new reality when in our heart we start to uphold God's creation. Your personal life will be affected. Everyone around you will be affected by when you uphold God's creation in your heart. Okay? It's the trigger mechanism for the change of everything. And it all begins in you. Okay? That's as simple as that. The grand awakening as far as Revelation says, happens in seven steps. Well, maybe, maybe. Grant, you know, Revelations is an option of what, how the end times will go down. But frankly, uh, that's only when it's totally self-evident that Jesus Christ died for nothing. Uh, and the events will be triggered. Okay, now, okay, now. The reality is, is the meek inherit the earth. It's a well-accepted statement. Now, the reality is if those who swear to God are not meek. Okay? And throughout my seven, eight years of pounding at the government, I've made it clear that it's oath holders who are being tested. And that's well understood in the scriptures that oath holders, those of the promise, will be tested. And the men of the Nineveh will rise in indignation. So says Luke 11. Now, most people accept that it's Luke 11 or Matthew 12. 
Now, I'm saying the world's big enough for both. Okay? And Matthew 12 is where uh, nobody rebelled. And technically, people in far off places may have never gotten the message and don't rebel. Okay? But the first part of that, where, you know, the messenger will be swallowed by the heart of the earth, that happened. Uh, and it's triggered the beginning of the 2300 evenings and mornings about seven years ago, which came and went. Um, the reality is, is um, we are in our end times. End of story. And uh, basically, near our end times, we're supposed to get a message that changes everything. That's the job of the advocate, so says Jesus. Okay. Now, the reality is, is, uh, in monotheism, uh, God is everything spiritual, and he created the creation, which is everything of substance. Uh, okay, These are two everythings, completely separate everythings. Now, if we go from upholding God, which was Abraham's trust, and we go to upholding God's creation, we go from one everything, to the other everything, and everything changes. It's that simple. The message of our end times is supposed to be really simple. It's supposed to reflect good. It's also supposed to change everything. And uh, that's a hard bill to fill. Except upholding God's creation does that. It actually edifies or glorifies the message that Abraham had was given by the promise of uphold. He upheld God, and for this he was called righteous. Now, the new message of the end covenant is supposed to edify that. Well, if we start to uphold God's creation, we will know true godliness, and we will return to the mindset of the ancients in the blink of an eye. And that's what prophecy says. And it happens to everyone when the collective conscious recognizes what is deep in everyone's heart, which is a 1 Corinthians 3 uh, riddle of the prophet, you know, of the new covenant. The new covenant will reveal the very thing that is the goodness in people's heart. Now the reality is, is everyone who has ever done good in his life was upholding God's creation and didn't know. Okay? Didn't identify and focus in on that. Now, if you take the subconscious ideal uh, notion of upholding God's creation as the foundation of all good, and you make it the reason why you do something good, then uh, you, your mindset completely changes. Uh, you become a, uh, you surrender to love. And uh, you're wide awake and wide open Two, when uh, the sun has a massive solar flare. Uh, okay? Uh, I'm saying flat out that if you read uh, Isaiah 40, right at the beginning there, it's uh, when, okay, that offer to trigger that solar flare was turned down uh, four years ago. And then it was turned down again last year. Okay? Read those uh, Isaiah 40 at the beginning. It sounds like a solar flare, followed by a solar wind. Uh, Isaiah 59 is what I'm pushing right now, which is the voice of the West. And Israel will learn to fear the voice from the West, is what it says. And in Isaiah 59's situation, it's a time like back in Noah's age, when uh, the world was consumed in violence. It uh, was ruled by evil men who are hypocritical liars and nobody lifted a finger to uh, do anything. So God put on his helmet of salvation, his breastplate of righteousness and his cloak of vengeance and descends on the world in a cloud with all his angels. And then it, that is an accurate description of a solar flare, a really big solar flare happening. Uh, Moses gave the, the, the clue that it's irrelevant whether you're, it, it comes from the, the heavens or from the earth. And the reality is a solar flare of the magnitude that's coming is emitting 
radiation that the it's as if the earth wasn't there okay it'll go right through the earth okay a major solar flare is coming and when's it happening at god's command okay but we are in a cycle look around you the world is uh falling apart around us okay uh uh Luke 21 and Revelations point to the fact that you know you're near the end when uh, it, Jerusalem is surrounded by armies. Well, London is the capital of law in this unholy trilogy of the New World Order. And it's surrounded by armies right now. Uh, we are really, really, look around you, okay? World War III is about to explode anywhere in the world for no apparent reason. and uh, we look at 2 Thessalonians 2, and there is an accurate description of a solar flare followed by a solar wind in 1 Thessalonians. Uh, two, oh, 1 Thessalonians is an accurate description of a solar flare again. But that happens when evil starts doing another false flag. Okay, another major false flag, which is uh, fraudulent miracles and wondrous signs will be done by someone called the Antichrist. Okay, now, uh, if that has all the markings of harp and uh, the reality is there, it's uh, all those who believed in a lie will be sucked in. And the solar flare happens and it's called Judgment Day. Okay, and again... It's the breath of my Lord Jesus Christ is the solar wind, okay? In 1 Corinthians 15, uh, I really am the one like Adam, okay? Adam is someone who brought the dead to life through human means, okay? And this messenger of our end times is supposed to bring the dead to life through human means. Now. I'm challenging the act of supremacy of 1559, which is 430 years after my uh, abnormal birth mentioned in 1 Corinthians 15. And basically, I'm challenging the bar to change the oath to the bar from a swearing to God to swearing to uphold God. Okay? God's creation. Okay? Now, the reality is these dead things called corporations would start serving mankind if that happened. Okay? And they refuse. It's a very simple solution. Now, the reality is I have a, a damage award that redeems all debt in the world. And it's not mine. Uh, they refuse to take it, and that would have fulfilled Isaiah 40. And we would have gone through uh, a solar flare through the gentle spirit. Okay. Now, there are people who believe that that's a total oxymoron. Okay. But the reality is, is, um, it's a promise. Okay. It's a promise that there, you know, and it's a serious warning by Jesus Christ that there is no substitute for good first fruit. And the only way good first fruit happens is through what Jesus Christ called repent or perish which was an English interpretation of the word metanoia. Metanoia, or perish, is actually what the word is. And metanoia means total about face in how you think. And the total about face in how you think happens when you go from upholding God, which is one everything, everything spiritual, to upholding God's creation, which is everything of substance. We get real. And we inherit the earth as sons. Okay? All end time events of our end times, I don't care where you read it from, sounds like a solar flare followed by a solar wind. And it's done in very poetic means. You know, God was angry with us. So, you know, and, you know, like that is, po that's poetry in motion. Okay? It is not the actual description of a solar flare done by a scientist. But you know what? Our end times end with a solar flare. And for that, we can all say thank you to these assholes called Masons who did everything three and four generations ago, followed the, uh, the advice of Albert Pike, 
and did evil so that good can result. Okay? Thank them. Okay? Frankly, they are exactly as the two Thessalonians two. They are possessed by a phenomenal, delu powerful delusion sent by God for delighting in wickedness and so will be destroyed. Okay? The gentle spirit will destroy the evil in mankind. And that happens when you, individual, as an individual, start upholding God's creation in your heart. Most people are doing it all the time anyways. They just don't know it. And that's the reality of the New Covenant. It's supposed to be something so fundamentally basic that is the truth and has never been written. Okay, It's never been written. It says that the New Covenant will not be conceived by uh, it will be conceived uh, by someone who is not human. Well, you know what? I honestly expect that to be over my dead body. Now, I accept that the Talmudists openly say that the, you know, the messenger must be killed of the new covenant, must die. Okay, they say killed uh, in order to please their God. And I accept that I must die. Okay, but First Timothy which is a good story of these evil people. Well, they repented. The message was seen throughout the world, and the messenger uh, did an ascension. Okay, and that's another way for the thing to happen. But you know what? They're all intent that revelations must happen. Okay, and uh, they're stuck in the spirit of death, which is what Romans is all about. Now, the spirit of life is. When we start upholding God's creation in our heart, death is conquered once and for all. Okay? It's, it's, it's the mystery of the Bible being revealed just before we self-destruct if we don't get the message. Because if we don't start upholding God's creation, we will destroy it. And frankly, that was the vision that the Talmudists wrote a theory and thesis on 700 and some odd years ago. And about the same time, the Jesuits wrote a similar doctrine saying that the world would end in 2012. And fine, you know, in the last generation, they construe that the Mayan calendar also ends in 2012, and they're all blaming it. Oh, look over there, it's the Mayan calendar. No, no, no. It's the Talmudist calendar and the Jesuit calendar that the world will be destroyed this year. And uh, if you don't think they're going to do it, then sit on your hands and expect Judgment Day to hit. Because that's what's going to happen. Okay? And hopefully it happens in uh, through the gentle spirit. Because until bad first fruit happens, uh, the chance of the gentle spirit occurring is 50-50. And if you believe in Jesus Christ, uh, you may not even be around to do it. Because raptures... Uh, the first sign that shit's going to hit the fan is raptures. Okay, uh, good people are just going to just start evaporating, and and that's all there is to it. We're gone. Um, it, but it's also a sign that shit hits the fan for whoever's left. And uh, I'm here for those for the living. Okay, um, upholding God's creation really is the message, uh, the promise that God made in the first commandment. It really will be the same order on earth as it is in heaven when we start to uphold God's creation in our heart. Okay, And as soon as you do that, you start following your heart. And uh, good will result. Okay? Uh, the meek will inherit the earth. Uh, oath holders are being tested. It looks like they're going to fail miserably. But you know what? It says, in that day, they believe. The, 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 the rebellion starts. This message has everything to do with Luke 21, 21. The message that uh, is hard to refute and starts a rebellion in the high places. It definitely is the message from the West. And you should look at other videos that I've made lately and uh, look at it. Uh, you know, you can't put it all in one video. Uh, I'm trying to put it in a card of less than 200 words. Okay, and I think I'm effective. Okay, uh, the reality is, is these people in high places want to die for a concept called shatan. 
And Shatan is this ancient god of evil from Nineveh that also went under the name Baal. Okay? The man represents pure evil. The evil itself of the world is what he construes and works on, which is the love of money. You know, the Arab world has every right to call white men and the Gentiles uh, form uh, that the the great Shatan. Okay, they have every right to do it because we live in a society consumed by the love of money, and everyone must repent. Change your way of thinking. When you start upholding God's creation in your heart, you create an aura around you that when the flash occurs uh, at God's command, the angels will recognize you for who you are, a true, genuine child of God who loves God. And you will be saved. You will witness the greatest show on earth. And hopefully... It's the greatest, uh, most wondrous uh, rejoicing experience for all oath holders. And, but maybe it's not. Technically, the oath holders don't want it to happen. And that's sad. And on that light, uh, I can carry on, but uh, this video must end. Uh, uh, get the card. Uh, pass it on. Yeah, that's the best thing anyone can do, is pass this message on. Thank you very much.